Uh, today, we have a scholar with us. He will talk to us about a very important topic, and that is the inequality in regional development in India. And he will talk about it at the district level in terms of human development. How is the human development different across different districts of India? Now, in any large country, there will always be differences. But if we have a pattern coming out of those differences, then we have a problem. Okay. But let's wait for uh, Dr. Alok Rajan Chaurasia. He's the scholar. He's done the work. Let's hit, listen to him. Over to you, sir. Thank you. I think, is it visible? Uh, no, let me put it on pause till your screen is up so that we can actually uh, hang on. Yes. Okay. Okay, we are back with the screen share. So, Dr. Charasia, please proceed okay. now. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mathur. And uh, good evening to my young colleagues. And uh, the discussion today is based on basically human development. Now, what we are discussing right now, just now, was that today everybody talks about economic development, talks about GDP growth, per capita income, and all these things. Nobody talks about human development. And the focus is on analysis at the district level. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, India, is, all, all of us know, India is a very vast, very diverse country. It is so thinking about Progress at the national level carries very, very little meaning as far as the and the welfare of a common man is concerned. So this is basic idea about this. Uh, so little bit of background. You see, India is one of those countries where human development has never been strong. The movement, human development movement has never been strong. India could produce till now, since 1990, India could produce only two national human development reports. The last report was produced in 2012. Since it's almost more than 10 years, no next report came out from the official side. There are many researchers that they have done at their own level. Now, according to United Nations Development Program, HDI in India, Human Development Index, that is the international scale to measure human progress, increased from 0 0.434 in 1990 to 0.633 on a scale of zero to one. Now this is a relative index. If you know about the construction of SDI, it is essentially a relative index. All the countries are listed, then maximum minus minimum, sorry, max, and that formula is used to calculate SDI. But the interesting point is that India's human development index rank of India in HDI decreased from 130 in 2000 to 132 in 2022 out of 192 countries. So basically our progress in comparison to other countries is you can say not uh, very satisfactory. In fact, we are going down rather than going up. And globally, all of us know that high rank in HDI is basically a means of national aggrandizement whereas the low rank reflects national inefficiency. So this, this is the scenario in India today. Actually, what, what is happening, very little information is available. So as I discussed, India is a country of countries. National averages hide within country disparities that are strong and persisted over time. Now, this is the problem with India, that the within country disparities have persisted over time since the day we became independent is not like today. It's it's a, a chronic problem. Now, if you if you go by available literature or available data or all these things, there is very little information to chart human progress at the state or union territory level, and there is virtually no information to chart human progress at the district level. Now that is the real problem. Now it is not that government of India was not interested. They started two projects. One was the State Plan for Human Development that was launched in 2010. And second was Human Development for Bridging Inequalities that was sometimes in 2015. But progress remained virtually almost at a standstill. There is very little. The focus was there, but 
the necessary institutional framework, necessary conceptual framework, necessary database, all those parts were missing. And an ad hoc approach was adopted every time. That just collect something, do something, come out with a report, and report is only a report, not more than that. There is no follow-up action, nothing more than that. Now, the purpose of this exercise that I have carried out is basically to measure human progress by calculating district human development index. And then on the basis of SDI, district SDI, to identify hot spot districts where the human progress is extremely poor or very poor. So these are the hot spot districts. Now, this type of exercise is very important in India because we are focusing a lot about district level decentralized development planning and programming. Right since independence, we are focusing on it. But the unfortunate part is that an operational framework is missing even today, where a district-based approach to development planning and programming can be institutionalized. There is approach, but every aspect of that approach is very ad hoc and dependent upon the what, what we can say, the sanctions or approvals or release of money from the top. The district itself has very limited opportunity to address its own development needs. That is the real challenge. Now, we have one framework. That framework is UNDP framework. But the problem is that data required for UNDP framework in India are not available at the district level. So we cannot apply that framework altogether. There have been some attempts. They have People have used alternative indicators and all these things. But the whole approach has been very diverse. Somebody has used some indicators, somebody has used other indicators. Even the two national develop, uh, human development reports, they are based on different set of indicators. So they cannot be compared. So the problem is that using or applying UNDP framework is as actually not possible at the district level in India. We have to devise an alternative thing. So I have also made an attempt in this direction. So just a recap, what is UNDP framework? Basically, it is based on three indexes. One index related to decent standard of living that UNDP measures in terms of gross national income per capita and uses logarithm because of uh, the basically uh, to make it linear with the progress. Then long and healthy life, that is measured in terms of life expectancy at birth, and then being knowledgeable. For that, they use mean years of schooling for adults age 25 years and above, and expected years of schooling in children of school going age. So the average of these two indicators gives the index of being knowledgeable. And the, these three indicators are combined. Earlier, it was, they were combined through an arithmetic mean. Now they are combined using geometric mean. So yeah. that gives you the human development index. So the yeah. geometric mean is, yes. Doctor, let me just uh, come in here uh, because these people may not know. You know, the arithmetic mean implies a uniform trade-off between the three. You know, to and everybody objected to it, including me, that you know this trade-off between the three factors is uh, there's no change in it. It's linear all the time. It's the same trade-off. So there were major objections from theoretical people that this arithmetic mean is has an implication. So then, uh, some years ago, like I think ten years ago. Uh, uh, the UN shifted to the geometric mean. Yeah. So the geometric, you know, every mean that you use has its own pros and cons. But the benefit of the HDI is that you cannot just substitute uh, education for life expectancy on a continuing uniform scale. So it's a technical issue, but it's an important technical issue to keep in mind. That's just. I mean, it's part, it used to be part of my lecture, so I have to okay, okay. come <laughs> back and say it here. Okay. Oh, so you see, recently there is a paper, a working paper, I don't know if it has been published or not, a working paper by, from 
Professor Sudhir Anand, who, who has been associated with the Professor Amar Sen and uh, has done a lot of work. In that paper, he has again recommended going back to uh, arithmetic mean to construct SDI. That's a paper from Yale University. Yeah. But the, the, this debate goes on. But yeah. my concern is the next one. Yeah, okay. No, but I just wanted the young people to know that these technical issues uh, have a continuing problem in theoretical means. But let's proceed to the practical side and let's listen. Sorry to interrupt. But there are other problems also. The, the, in, the problem that I am emphasizing is that all the three in, indicators that are used in the construction of index are average indicators. Now, the problem with the average indicators is that, say, for example, I have three persons. One has income two, other has income three, or third one has income five. I increase the income of the last one from five to 10. The average will increase, but the poor will remain poor. Right. So now that is the problem in all the three indicators. Yes. One, in the all the three indicators, that is the problem that these are the average indicators and average can be increased by improving the rich. Poor will remain poor and average will increase. Yes. So that is the problem with average. Yeah. So and another problem is that when you calcul calculate average, so average does not have any minimum or the maximum limit. So then you will have to put goal for a post, fix the goal post. Now, again, if you go through the literature or if you go through the UNDP framework also, the entire process of fixing the goal post is extremely arbitrary, very arbitrary. You can just divide, rank the all uh, uh, countries and they say what is the minimum expectation of life at birth or what can be the maximum expectation of life expectancy at birth like this and then you set the goal post. So what I have actually done, we have I have devised an alternative indicator. Instead of Average indicators, I have used proportion indicators. So proportion always ranges between zero and one. So there is no question of setting any goal post and office things. And proportion cannot be increased by just saying increasing the proportion, the rich poor will, it, it is not there. You define the poverty, define the poor, and then until unless that proportion is not increased, the things will not improve. So I have used three indicators. For decent standard of living, I have used proportion of households with wealth index at least seven, at least second quartile of the distribution. So if you dis uh, use the distribution and divide the distribution into five, five quartiles, then the poorest one are those which are the lower quartiles. So that is the thing that this proportion is actually critical to measuring human development. Then long and healthy life, probability of survival in the first five years of life. So higher the probability of survival and finally being knowledgeable, second school net enrollment rate. So this is, these three indicators, if you analyze basically every development effort, every development activity, every government basically focus on improving these three indicators. So the idea is that why don't we combine these three indicators into the alternative human development index. Now, second thing is that instead of using arithmetic mean or using geometric mean to combine the three indicators, I have used the concept of human development surface. Now, three indicators on a plane can be presented in a time frame. It, the progress starts from zero to one, maximum is one, minimum is zero in case of education. That means the proportion, uh, 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 that means the secondary school net enrollment rate. So it can be zero, nobody is in the secondary school, and it can be 100. All of the school going or secondary school age children are in school. So the net enrollment rate is one. Similarly, standard of living, nobody is below second quartile, and everybody is above, or all of them are below second quartile, so zero to one. And similarly with health. There is no, everybody survives up to first year of life, that becomes one. Nobody survives up to first year, of, first five years of life, that becomes zero. Now, this is the maximum possible surface. Zero to one, one, one. This is the maximum possible surface. And if the 
proportion is L for standard of living, proportion of H for health, and proportion of E. So the area of this particular triangle gives you the human development index. This is the human development surface for any particular problem of a population or for any particular area. So this is the idea. Now, if you, a simple geometry tells us that this area of this particular triangle can be calculated as, this is the alternative human development index, square root of L into E, E into H, H into L divided by three. It can be shown. I have my paper where I have proved this. There is, not, there is nothing. Actually, if you if you go with the, by this thing, there are actually three triangles: L H O O H E and L O E. The area of the three can be calculated very easily, and then this can be done. Now, important thing here is that when all the three are equal. That means progress is same in all the three dimensions of human development. Then this HDI becomes maximum possible. And this is simply the sum of the three divided by the three. That is the old HDI formula that is used by you. And another interesting aspect is that if you, if you calculate the difference between HDIM and HDIA, then it is the inequality in human progress in the three dimension. Yes. If the progress is same in the three dimensions, then this inequality will be zero. Otherwise, there will be an inequality. And the larger the, the difference in the progress, the larger the inequality index. So this is basically essentially, excuse me, this is essentially the framework that I have used. Now data comes from data come from the National Family Health Survey of 2019-21. That is the latest available data in India right now. So these uh, <clears throat> the NFHS provides indicators for 707 districts of the country. At that time, there were 707 districts. The number of districts have now is increased to 750. And in the recent uh, a political environment, they may go up very well to 800. Yes. So, but we have data only for 770. Every day, 10 new districts are being formed. So that is it. Uh, in under NFHS, in every district, around 1,000 households on average we are surveyed. On the basis of that, we calculated the indexes L, E, and H for each district of the 707 districts of the country. Now, this is the basically a summary of the distribution that that's uh, the, the three indexes. For example, the proportion of households having wealth index equal to or more than second wealth index quartile. So this is low. That means 50% of, uh, of if this, uh, the, this is less than 0. 0.5 in 293 districts. Out of 707 districts, in 293 districts, less than 50% households we are having a wealth index equal to or more than the second wealth index per time. Low in 160 districts, medium in 122 districts, high in 86 districts, and very high, that means greater than or equal to 0.95, only 46 districts. Take about secondary school net attendance ratio, more or less similar situation, only 78 districts are there, and there are 146 districts. And in the same situation in probability of survival in first five years of life, greater than 0 0.990 in only 76 districts. So in majority of the districts, we will come to that also. And these are the minimum and maximum values for just comparative purpose that uh, is there. Now, this is the distribution across the district. And you can see how the progress is there. There are simple pockets. There is one pocket. This is another pocket, and this is the whole dark area. You see, the entire center and entire east. Now, most of the in majority of the district human development situation is either very low or low. And here, there are some districts where the situation is medium, but high and very high situation normally here in the states of you can say Punjab, Haryana, Delhi. And some states, some districts of Rajasthan adjacent to Delhi, here in some districts of Maharashtra, here also, and here Tamil Nadu, Kerala, these are things. But this area, 
this particular the entire central part comprising of uttar pradesh madhya pradesh bihar jharkhand odisha and entire north east except for a small portion of this uh, mizoram the, you can say the situation is extremely poor uh, dr charitya could you comment on gujarat please and gujarat you see this is gujarat in general situation is not very good there are only two district two or three district you can say one two three and this one four maximum district it is the medium that is 0 0.702850 or it is low the good thing is that there is no very low district like this yeah there is a very low so in gujarat overall i i do not see that the situation is so good in gujarat although there is a lot of claim about gujarat but this index that I, that i have calculated it does not provide a good thing. in in maharashtra also you can see that there are there are two different things in this part part situation as best, best is average it is here it is good same is in andhra pradesh also but here in karnataka tamil nadu and kerala kerala is very good here some district of punjab is very high but in in this this belt is actually highly developed belt, belt haryana Punjab, Himachal Pradesh, Delhi, as near to national capital territory of Delhi, and this is about inequality, progress inequality. So in general, inequality is low. The districts which are poor, they are poor in all the three dimensions. This districts which are good, they are good in all the three dimensions. But there are some high. You see here in the, the, these are the districts in Gujarat. Uh, the, the eastern border of Gujarat, there is a problem. You see, these are the three, four districts where inequality is very high. If this is UP in eastern Madhya Pradesh, in Chhattisgarh and Jharkhand. This is it. If you if you see that you you will uh, you will just like to uh, inquire which is the poorest SDI district in India. It is district Subal in Bihar, mm -hmm. and which is the best in SDI? It is the district Mahe in Puducherry. Now, the three indicators that we have used is the, in that the HDI in Maha is one. That is the NFHS data. There may be some problem in data also, but the, according to NFHS data, the under five mortality rate in district Maha is zero. Net secondary school enrollment rate is 100%. And there is no household with a wealth index less than or equal to the second quartile of the distribution. So this is the extreme form of variation, but inequality in this part, and you see inequality in northeastern part is also quite high. And you see that is there. Now this is there. I have basically classified districts into all the three dimensions: the standard of living below average, education below average, health below average. Two hundred and thirty-one districts. That means almost one third districts of the country. The human progress is below average in all the three dimensions. Then other districts, the proportion is quite low. You see, this this, this junk or this bulk of the, these is one third districts, they are the real thing. If you go over above average, above average, above average, there are only nine, 39 districts, just around 5% districts where you can say the situation is good in all the three dimensions. Otherwise, uh, different districts have different type of things. But the, the problem here is that it is the below average 233%, one third is per districts of the country. There we can say that these are the hotspot districts of the country where the human progress is below average in all the three dimensions of human development index. So, <clears throat> the, uh, these are my simple conclusions. There is very little to say. First of all, I have developed an alternative framework where there is no scope for what we can say that uh, how to set the goalposts, how to do all these things. We we use the proportion indicators. Proportion indicators are important in the sense that they address many of the problem of combining the HDI, say, average or all these things, all these things. And second thing is, I have used the surface concept. It is not the linear concept. It is the surface concept. The importance of surface concept, uh, concept is 
that the three dimensions are the, the uh, surface concept takes into consideration the correlation or association between the three dimensions of development. We cannot treat the three dimensions independent of each other. So we have to uh, take their association. That is based on their form of data. Yeah. So, and the regional disparities are very much there. These are there, there's nothing to say. The problem is essentially one third of the districts where the progress is low and all the things. But as far as the progress is considered, there is only just around 5% districts. We can all analyze further it is where these districts mm -hmm. are located and all these things. But the whole situation is that there is very little, uh, there is, I can say there is very, very limited hope in, in this uh, whole approach about economic driven or economic growth driven development. Uh, that is not reflected altogether in in the human development index or the progress of human development in India. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's uh, first give a chance to the discussants to speak, and then I'll also have a small comment, and we can have a discussion. So I forget who was first in the order, but Shreya and Vaishnavi, I forget who was first. So please go ahead. You probably remember better than me. Uh, so who was ever first? Please go. Yeah, I can go first. Okay. So essentially, HDI Human Development Index. Uh, is, Dr. Charasya, uh, can uh, we stop sharing the screen so that we can just see each other? Yeah. Better. Okay, anyway, Shrey, continue while he's trying so to. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So essentially, uh, Human Development Index uh, as. Uh, uh, proposed or developed by the UNDP, UN Development Program, consists of three uh, three dimension as mentioned by Alok sir, which is life expectancy, education, and their ability to earn per capita income. Right. So these three uh, these three components are are you know are the basis of uh, of uh, the kind of life a human being uh, will live in his uh, you know like uh, in his years it was first developed by it was first launched by mahbub al haq of the UNDP and uh, so but in 2010 in 2010 uh, inequality dimension was also added right by the UNDP which and the and they proposed a, a new HDI which is inequality HDI and it accounted for the inequality uh, between genders between pay scale between health facilities across the across the country so I would like to uh, like ask Alok sir how inequality can be uh, you know integrated in your proposed uh, system of evaluation you see that's what i'm saying that the whole issue number one i have already discussed that particular inequality inequality in progress in different dimensions that i have already mentioned that if you calculate right. that then then you can calculate the inequality and that i have shown you so there is no problem it is, it is already addressed in the framework that i have developed. so it is the, right. in, that in the undp framework in average framework, there is a problem. But in my frame, right, framework, right, right. that is not a problem. Ah, okay. And also, uh, I think one of the major issues faced by India specifically is the data data issue. Because we don't have, we don't have sufficient data collection capabilities as well as data points. And, and uh, when it comes to, you know, at least on the national level, we do have a good system, even at the state level. But as you mentioned, at the district level, uh, the data collection capabilities and uh, and you know sto storage issues are very high. And uh, uh, like as as we all know, re re uh, I think in last week, uh, the new Nobel Prize winner was announced, and uh, she uh, she she was able to published her research in the in the late in late 90s and she she she, she collected data of the past 200 years so we are 
like we are very behind the kind of data collection or uh, evaluation uh, techniques the us had so i think this need to be addressed as soon as possible yeah. See, this is uh, what my to the to yeah. the best of knowledge i think india is perhaps the only country in the world where as you go down the administrative system public administrative system right. the, the paucity of data increases it is inversely related in all the countries of the world it is basically a bottom up approach but in india it is a top down approach and this is not right, right. Uh, the, this this situation is not new it, it, it has persisted uh, right since independence and nobody has ever tried right. to do it uh, the, the the reason is that apathy, apathy to from the public administration side i have a long discussion with right. many bureaucrats on this regard but they say no 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 there is no need. there is no need. It, is, it is fine right. it is fine now it is for the first time that national family health survey provided district level estimates there have been attempts right. previously we also have a district level household and facility survey and all these things but if the the national family health survey tried to standardize the data collection indicator generated system at the at least at the district level important point is still remain in a district we survey the nfhs surveys only around 1000 households so you cannot analyze disparities within the district which are also very strong or which persist has persisted over time so we cannot do there is only a sample of 1000 households so one pro yeah. another problem is that when you estimate indicators on the basis of such a small sample there may be large percentage of error so may not reflect the correct situation but the fact remains that india we do not have any institutionalized system of collecting processing storing and making available development related data whether it is economic development or human development or social development at the district level and below the district level. now right. below the district level uh, only source of information whatever limited information whatever limited data you can say is the population census decennial population census the population census used to provide us what we call the primary census set which provides you the information for every village and every municipal ward of the country earlier this primary census effect was only for the population count but in the 2011 population census they also provided household level primary census effect in which they provided information about standard of living say type of house household assets whether a household has a banking account or not all these things so we, I, i have done i have used that data to calculate village development index on the basis of the primary census subject or the census data that that is already published in some journal it's quite long but right. now we have we did not have any we do not have any uh, decennial population census since 2011 so if i use that data that is meaningless because it is almost 23 years old so right now the only source is that national family health survey but the problem of data in india is and will continue in the coming years simply because at the highest level of the government at the highest level of the bureaucracy nobody is interested in having reliable timely what we call the smart data that can reflect right. the development progress altogether well thank you so, so much have, okay uh, vaishnavi i think it's your turn so please introduce yourself yeah. and then your comments uh yeah i hope i'm audible yes yeah. go ahead all right uh, so i am vaishnavi warrior in environmental economics from madras school of economics um so uh, my research interest is in uh, climate and agriculture so i my area is also i'm also interested in development economics so this is something i was really looking forward to uh, thank you so much sir uh, for your presentation it was really uh, the insight that was provided was very helpful in the sense that this level analysis so that really gave me a lot of uh, insight so my question is also uh, related to that only so uh, from the uh, human uh, development progress chart that we have seen probably in 
12th slide, uh, we see that almost all districts, there, there is a region-wise or a regional or a spatial similarity. So uh, we see that in a few states, let's say Kerala, let's say Kerala, take Kerala for example, there is almost all the districts have a very high uh, progress in human development. And we see this clustered pattern in almost all the states in the sense that um, almost all the districts in a particular state is showing a certain level of progress in human development. So there is a chance that this can be attributed to state policies or state level schemes and approaches that they are taking up. But in a few states in the northern part and uh, somewhere to the eastern part, there is a little in the sense that within the state itself, there is very high and medium level of progress. So I wanted to know why is there a possible chance that despite having similar circumstances in level of in terms of state policies, why is there a chance that uh, different districts within a state is showing different progress in human development? You see, when the, again the problem is, you see, this, this problem is again the problem of averages. Mm. Uh, you see, in in uh, when we were studying in our school uh, colleges, and first uh, uh, the subject of statistics was introduced to me, then there was a very interesting story that there was a financial clerk known in Hindi as Munshi. So there right. was a financial clerk. He was very strong, staunch believer of average. So he was, that was very old days. Most of the travel was on foot. There were no bridges, nothing like this. And people have to use to cross a river or Nala by just measuring the height of the river or Nala and that's all. So he was going with his boss. The boss was there, his wife was there and two children were there. He, they reached the river and the boss asked the clerk or Munshi just to see what is the average depth of the river? <laughs> so he went inside the river, came out, and then he calculated the average height of the family is more than the average height, depth of the river. <laughs> so he concluded that we can cross the river. There is no problem. Average height of the family is uh, greater than the <laughs> average depth of the river. So what happened? Only Fine. the boss and wife and the munshi could cross the river and the both the two children were washed away in the river because they, they have, so that problem is here also we are calculating the, uh, the 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 index at the district level now within district there are disparities one very uh, interesting disparity is the composition of population by social class there are many districts where the human development index is very low they are where they are very highly dense district in terms of scheduled tribe population. Now their context, their whole issue of development is entirely different. Then there is another important aspect is that of urbanization. The highly urbanized districts and poorly urbanized districts. So until and unless we do not take into account all these things, we cannot explain. But there is there. If you if you analyze the data, the entire paper, there are districts. The, uh, all highly urbanized districts are very well developed. The districts where the urbanization is very poor, there is a problem. So this is basically why it is so. It is basically because of our oh, development uh, philosophy of development. The entire orientation is urban driving. You, you might have heard from quite some times that the development of India lies in urban development, not in rural development. Actually, if you, if you see, if you go, the villages in India are now deserted, almost deserted. I have seen, when I go to the village, I've seen most of the time, the males, adult males of the village are sitting in under the uh, banyan tree playing cards. They have no work, very limited. In, in my particular area, in, in the Bundelgan region of Uttar Pradesh, where, from where I belong, I found that many of the villages are deserted. People have moved out of the village, went to the urban area, living in pathetic conditions there. But they are not ready to return back to the village simply because there is no work. If we, if we do not have, the fact is this, that we do not have work for adult population in the villages, in the fields, no, no work. The, the advantage is what we call it, the, the precipitation effect of development has not reached the villages in India. That is true, that is the fact. And that is the reason, that is the problem.
Okay, thank you so much. Let me add my comments here. First of all, I'm really grateful that you have done this, okay, because it's very important to know what's happening at the district level. And we really don't have national data across all the districts of India. So this is really very important and brings out very clearly, for example, uh, in the issue of Gujarat, that the rural areas have been neglected in spite of all the economic growth and progress. And even in Maharashtra, we do have some areas where right. uh, the progress is spotty. So it's very important to know that. But before comments, let me ask you to look, if you have looked at two issues, and if not, perhaps uh, we can. First, it would be good to know, you know, in your lowest category, the 32.7% of the districts, what is the proportion of India's population in those districts? Okay, so it's one thing, it's one thing to say that it is, say, 33% of the districts, but is it 25% of the population? Because the, those districts will have less population, as you mentioned, people have moved out. Is it a how, what is the proportion of the population in those districts? So that's question number one. And question number two, I know that for many years now, uh, under two different names, the gov union government has had what they call as backward districts or now very politely called aspirational districts, where they have said that these are, so to speak, backward. Uh, whether there is significant overlap between your index and the districts that are listed as, let's just call them what they are listed as, backward by the union government. So this uh, sort of mapping, whether you are capturing something that they are missing, that would be very important to know that the government has aspirational districts, but they are not catching all of them. Okay, so those are the sort of two uh, questions. And one comment, you're absolutely right that in the district, there are variations. Uh, we are looking at uh, small towns at the headquarters of districts, uh, basically uh, for some practical development work. There's an NGO that my friends and I are forming. And if you go to the district headquarters, you know that they are far, far more developed than the villages. Okay? There's just no way that any village or even if you go to the second and third town in the district, which is say the Taluka headquarters. The Taluka headquarters are because I have looked at the data for, say, do they have a good hospital? Do they have an engineering college? Or do they have a rail connection? Do they have a road connection? And the answer is no, they don't have. So clearly, they, you know, if you have an engineering college, like I'm talking specifically of Birbhum district in West Bengal, which is not highly urbanized at all. It's far from anywhere. And you can call it a rural district. <clears throat> its headquarters is a place called in Bengali Shuri. And Shuri has an engineering college. Shuri has a reasonably good district hospital. It has a rail connection. It has a good road connection. But that's missing in the rest of the district. So right away, you can know that there is a disparity and inequality right across the district. And echoing your hopelessness in the villages, we are simply trying to create jobs in the district headquarters so that people who are leaving don't go to the large cities, but go to say the district headquarters for jobs because it's so hard though we are going to, in spite of the number of non-profit organizations and NGOs, you really cannot see the development in the villages. As you rightly said, they're hollowing out. And a lot of, I mean, the South Indian states, especially Tamil Nadu and Karnataka, they are running on cheap North Indian workers. I mean, they. We have a national labor market and they've all migrated there. And it came out very clearly in the pandemic uh, when Bangalore almost collapsed because the workers just left for home. So indeed, the disparities are there. I'm so glad that you have put uh, conceptually sound numbers on it. And it's very, very remarkable. So thank you so much for that. And let's see. That's all from me. So let's see what your response is, sir. As regards the population composition, actually, again, there is a problem. 
district level population estimates that we have date back to 2010. After that, there is no estimate. Government of India makes population projection, but that projection is confined only to states and unit territory. Only recently, I have done something came out with district level projections, but they are projections, forecasts, not the actual count. So calculating the proportion of population with a low human development index based on a 2010 population data carries very little to But I have not done that thing. I, I can do that thing. There is no problem. Yeah, but let's that, let's do it just because you know we have to use the data that we have. And that, that yes. Yeah. Yeah. That we can. yeah. Now, as regards your second question, you see, I do not know. The I in fact I do not at all agree with the indicators that government of India or Niti I use to identify aspirational districts. They are essentially to according to me, I may be wrong. According to me. They are essentially input indicators. Government has provided this thing, government has provided this thing, and th those who are killing it. As regards people-centered data, data related to the welfare of the people, that data are simply missing. Okay. So, so the whole thing is that how we can compare what I, we have done with that uh, the, the entire framework. Another important point is if you go by Niti Aayog report, different version of report have different set of indicators. Mainly because that my apprehension is that since the progress is not being reflected by the old set of indicators, they simply change the indicator to reflect the prog progress or to confuse everybody that we are progressing with. Okay. Okay. So, now, I don't so, know the details, so I'm glad to hear it from you as to what it is. And I don't, I mean, obviously, I don't keep up the way you keep up with it. So I'm glad to hear it that. Uh, because, you know, even this, the Birbhum district is classified as aspirational by Niti Aayog, which would indicate that it's backward. But my reading is that it's not that backward. This is a place where we can see growth. So I was surprised to read that it is an aspirational district. Doesn't, you know, it's a backward district for sure. You know, it's a rural district, but that's, you know, compared to other rural districts, it doesn't look like it's one so, of the whole, whole, there are mainly two issues one is how do you conceptualize development development can be concept conceptualized in the context of the government i remember long ago i was evaluating a national rural employment program so that the terms of reference from me was that you will have to personally visit 40 percent of the activities so when I read the district headquarters, the district officer said, okay, you need 40%. So the total amount of uh, spent expenditure was this much, 40% this much. So we can go to a particular hospital where, where the, that has been constructed at the district hospital and your task is over. <laughs> so if you conceptualize development in that context, that's what government does. That yeah. we have spent 20, 22,000 crores in a national highway and 40,000 crores in an airport and all these things. So that all reflects that Indian economy is growing on. That's fine. That is no, no, no question about it. Definitely. But that is, if you agree about that development, that's fine. But I do not agree. That is entire because the, that development doesn't not need. For example, you see, we construct the highways, electronic highway, green highway, world class highways, all this thing. Recent data are not available. But if you go through by 2011 data. Only 4% of the households in India has a four-wheeler. That more. includes the tractor also. Only 4%. 4%. 2011 household data. Household primary census. So th th this means that we are constructing highways for only 4% of the households. If this is development, that's fine. There is no problem. Well, this obviously, uh, we need to have the rural roads. This is very clear. I don't think there's any debate about that. But yeah, you are right that uh, the focus is too much on uh, big ticket items and not enough on what reaches the people. And you see that in the migration pattern, as you rightly pointed out, the villages are hollowing out uh, from the adult male workers. And uh, in summary, you know, uh, South India is a jobs factory and North India is a babies factory. So the population of North India is essentially going to work at low wages in South India. It's quite a remarkable change uh, that 
you know, what else can it be? Because there's going to be no opportunity in those villages. There's just nothing. So you are rightly pointed it out. But okay, I think uh, that's very good. Anything else you'd like to add, sir, before I give the last chance to the young people? Because I've invited them and they've sat through this. So let's hear from you and then from them. You see, the whole thing is, if you, if you want to change the basic mindset of the ruling class, you will have to generate the evidence. If the evidence is not generated, if the evidence remains anecdotal or not based on fact, actual real time, real time data, then the ruling class, whether it is bureaucracy or political class or whatever you can say, they will continue to have their own assumptions, ideas and go on pushing development in their own way. So there is very little in that. If you have evidence for generating evidence, you will have to develop a system. A system independent of those who are responsible for development activities. You see, if, if, you, if you go, uh, if you see many countries, for example, Australia, Canada, South Africa, they have converted their statistical system into an autonomous organization. Now, Australia says it is statistics Australia. That is independent of the government functioning altogether. They work auto autonomously, entirely independent of the government system. Canada also has statistics Canada. South Africa also has statistics South Africa. They are not de dependent upon the world. In India, what is the problem? We have a ministry of statistics and program implementation. Right. It has no system of collecting data. Yeah. They have nothing. They yeah. are entirely dependent upon the states and the states are entirely dependent upon on their own machinery and nothing more than that. Nowadays, there is a lot of, you see, you might have heard, you have looked into a lot of Emphasis focus on management information system, MIS. Only MIS data are available. MIS data is what? It is not related to the people. It is related to the services that are delivered by the government. And everybody knows that the MIS data is associated with a substantial error of duplication, misclassification, and all these things over time. Now, if you want to make evidence, generate evidence for this type of data, only God bless India. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. It was a very uh, enlightening discussion that we have had with you. Uh, let me go with Shrey first and let Vaishnavi have the last word. Yes, so, sir. So uh, I think uh, I'm, I'm glad Vaishnavi mentioned about the clustering of uh, development across India. And I think uh, our, our, uh, in terms of development, our focus uh, now should be, I think, in the in the heartland area of India, right? Because that area, that Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, that whole area is uh, under underdeveloped and it is it is not very you know performing well. Also, uh, Shubhosh had mentioned about the infrastructure uh, that uh, uh, like you know big airports, big highways will not like the investment in those uh, areas are essential important but also investment and uh, uh, you know investment in health education on the ground is uh, far important so i i believe that uh, this may not become uh, another uh, bubble of investment and uh, yeah this was uh, what i uh, thought yeah okay thank you shri vaishnavi please uh, yeah, so uh, what I was thinking was the scope of further develop uh, further research and development in this area is much vast because considering a lot of different aspects such as gendered impact or maybe rural and urban distribution, a distinction within a district, all that can be analyzed using the data and the work that her has done. So it, it is really uh, very inspiring that the district level analysis of human development has been done. Um, and uh, so that is what I would like to take forward with me from this. The scope and to read much more regarding the same. Uh, so it is like Shrey said, it is very much important that we focus on areas where development progress has been um, very slow or very low. So, uh, so that is the scope of research. I guess that is left with us. Okay, thank you so and much. And for us to take forward. 
yeah. let me just say that there's one other young person whom I'd invited. She has network issues and couldn't connect. And my friend TC Raghavan, he did try to connect. I could see his image every now and then. He didn't connect. But overall, I think the idea of having young discussants present, uh, Sir uh, Dr. Charasia, it's very new. I've just tried it two or three times. And I am now convinced that this is the way forward, that we shouldn't just talk, senior people talk to each other. We should have young Definitely. people there so that not only they get a chance to follow what we are saying, but they also get a chance to have a say, to learn how to analyze and how to take it forward. So I thank you all very much. And uh, let's we'll probably have more sessions with young people in there. And Dr. Jarasia, please, if whenever you feel like coming back with another report of yours, I'll be happy to have you because you said that you had done some other reports, this and that. Maybe in one or two months, we'll be very happy uh, to have you back here with a set of another young people uh, because your reports are very much on the ground and they methodologically sound. Ah, that's a poem. <laughs> 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 they are sound and very much on the ground and we'd love to hear from you because you know the grassroots very well and we'd really be happy to have you back here okay so that's an open invitation just let me know when you are ready and we will give you the time and have you back so thank you Shrey uh, thank you Vaishnavi thank you, sir. and thank you, you glad. thank you so much sir for the opportunity all right. Yeah, Glad yeah, I could yeah, join. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's yeah. say bye and we'll be back. I'll send you the link soon to the report sure. and it will be on YouTube and you'll have it soon. Okay. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.